Namaste. Welcome to the 17th session of the course Yoga and Positive Psychology for Managing Career and Life. In this session, we are going to look at pranayams as intervention for positive psychological outcomes and even beyond. As usual, so quick recap, we are studying interventions for managing self and career according to their location or we can say primary location in the five koshas, panch koshas. We looked at ahar and asanas as intervention primarily located at annamaya kosh. And in today's session, we are going to extend our discussion from the last session about pranayam as interventions at pranamaya kosh level. We also know that all these koshas are interconnected with each other and intervention at one kosh influences other kosha, koshas as well. In the last class, if you can recall, uh, we discussed about pranavayu, nadi system, chakras. We also looked at the classification of pranayam practices uh, in the form of conscious breathing, primary uh, breathing methods and classical pranayam. As uh, mentioned in the last class, we are extensively referring for these techniques, uh, this book by Swami Niranjanandaji Saraswati. Uh, it is published by Bihar School of Yoga in Munger. You can recall that we connected how our breathing is deeply connected with the different parts of the brain and conscious breathing brings activity zone to the prefrontal level from the limbic and the reptilian uh, brain structures and this conscious breathing eventually helps us in being uh, more alert, more aware and uh, also help us to take more informed and conscious decisions on a moment to moment basis. Let us start today's session by looking at what uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutra says about pranayam. Uh, this is mentioned primarily in the first chapter and second chapter. In the first chapter, it is mentioned as a method of controlling mind. So, in the first chapter, uh, Maharshi Patanjali explained what are the different methods of controlling mind, how to do this, what is called Chitta Vritti Nirodh, uh, which is uh, one of the important aspect of uh, yoga and that is stated in the very beginning of the Yoga Sutra. Amongst various methods, Maharshi Patanjali talks about pranayam and writes that tasmin sati, tasmin sati, swasa prashashayo gati vichheda pranayama. Kind of a definition that controlling the motion of exhalation and the inhalation once this is accomplished. So, once asanas are accomplished, the second step is controlling the motion of exhalation and inhalation and that is called pranayam. In the very next sutra, uh, Maharshi Patanjali gave the classification of pranayam, different types. So, bahya, abhyantara, stambhavratti, desh kala sankhyabhi, paridrashtaha, dirgha, sukshma. So, pranayam has either external or internal or uh, motionless modifications. They are to be regulated by the place, time and number and they can also be either long or short. So, this is uh, some insight about the variety of the methods possible under the intervention or under the upang of pranayam. He also talks about the fourth pranayam, which is transcendental in nature, bahya abhyantar vishay apekchi chaturtha. Fourth pranayam is restraining the prana, directing it either to the external or internal objects. Once that happens, 
the covering over the inner light is removed tatah chiyate avaranam so when we reach at the fourth level of pranayam a uh, veil of ignorance is removed that is uh, these are the four main sutras where pranayam is directly mentioned in the patanjali yoga sutra uh, our focus of discussion is mainly about well being and managing career so we are not going to have much discussion on the transcendental aspect of pranayam nonetheless this is very very important aspect and according to some yogis this is the ultimate object transcending the individual identity and being connected with the universal identity uh, constant integrated awareness or consciousness that's the ultimate object to kaval is the ultimate object to but in these sessions we are not talking about these transcendental objectives we are primarily focusing on well being and managing career so our discussion about the pranayam will also follow that scope so first conscious breathing we discussed in the uh, previous session in today's session we are going to start our uh, conversation about techniques of pranayam with the abdominal breathing let us look at the benefits and what are the processes of abdominal breathing you might recall that we discussed about three types of breathing and abdominal breathing was the first one we discussed uh, abdominal breathing helps to relax any mental tension it promotes uh, parasympathetic cardiovascular dominance you all remember that sympathetic and parasympathetic two uh, aspects of nervous system parasympathetic is more related to fight flight or fright whereas parasympathetic calms down our system so the abdominal breathing uh, helps in uh, promoting the parasympathetic nervous system it exerts full form bottom of lungs then from sides so it ensures that uh, bottom of the lung fully filled so the fresh air also move to the uh, to these lobes otherwise uh, and mostly if we are uh, breathing Uh, not consciously then many parts of the lower lobes uh, are not able to get enough oxygen so abdominal breathing helps in achieving that due to the large or due to the greater blood flow in the lower lungs due to the gravitational forces increases the efficiency of the gas exchange so, there is a additional benefit of having more air uh, and as a result more oxygen in the lower uh, lobes of the lungs because that result into better gas exchange on the uh, surface base of the lungs and heart are attached to the upper surface of diaphragm liver spleen stomach and pancreas lie immediately beneath the diaphragm and are attached to the lower surface increased diaphragmatic movements improves the blood circulation in these organs as well so this is additional benefit uh, of uh, abdominal breathing this helps to drain the subdiaphragmatic lymphatic system and we know that lymphatic system is also deeply connected to the disease resistance mechanism of the body there is a cycle uh, it leads to something then it further leads to something and that creates a virtuous cycle uh, by the diaphragmatic breathing a wide amplitude of diaphragm movement uh, slows the whole process uh, that result into deep breathing and that result into release of endorphins so this is one virtuous cycle then the narrow range of the movement result in shallow and rapid respiration that's a vicious cycle if we keep uh, breathing unconsciously generally those breaths are shorter shallower and that result into uh, inverse of these benefits another cycle is which is virtuous in nature relaxed thoughts which is the result of the deep breathing they allow muscle relaxations and relaxed breathing also calm down the mind so these are the virtuous cycles 
created or initiated by diaphragmic breathing. Let us look at the technique of the natural diaphragmatic breathing. Lie in Savasan, uh, relax the whole body, uh, allow the breath to become spontaneous, regular and even. Uh, take focus to diaphragm and visualize it as a sheet of muscle beneath the lungs. While breathing in, breath is being drawn into the lungs. While breathing out, diaphragm relaxes, pushing air out of the lung. So, continue this process, continue this natural abdominal breathing for some time without any resistance. Place right hand on abdomen above navel and left hand over center of the chest. So, that is the next step. While breathing, you will feel your right hand moving up with inhalation and right hand uh, you feel moving down with the exhalation. Uh, please remember that there should not be any tension in the abdomen. Your left hand should not move with breath which is on the chest. Try to feel the expansion and contraction of the lungs. Continue for few minutes. Uh, feel that only diaphragm is moving with the breathing process. So, this is the utilization of or employing our power of awareness. So, that is the process of abdominal breathing. Uh, there are lot of YouTube videos and one video is there following exactly the same process in the application of the Bihar school of yoga. You can refer that and these are useful applications uh, for taking you through uh, these practices in a step by step manner. Next conscious breathing we are going to discuss is called yogic breathing. The practice of yogic breathing enables one to experience the complete range of each breathing mode. You might remember uh, abdominal, thoracic and clavicular breathing, these are the three types of breathing we discussed in the previous session. Yogic breathing enables, yogic breathing is about breathing all three aspects, all three ways. This process increases the ventilation and all lobes are expanded, all uh, lobes of the lungs are expanded and this bestows the benefit of fully controlled breathing. It does not mean that we should be doing yogic breathing all the time, we should allocate some time and those time durations are given in the protocol, uh, but doing this for some time gives us control on all, as all aspect of breathing. And what happens when we have control over breathing? We naturally have control over mental processes as well when we have more control on the different aspects of breathing. So, let us look at what is the technique of yogic breathing. It starts with the same process lying down in Savasana, relaxing and consciously relaxing the whole body. Inhale slowly from diaphragm and allowing diaphragm to expand fully, that is the first step. Then breathe slowly and deeply so that no sound is heard, so we need to be conscious of it. At the end, inhale little more and feel air filling upper lobes of the lungs. So, here we are consciously filling up upper lobes of lungs as well, which is which makes it different from the abdominal breathing. Uh, this completes the one inhalation. So, one inhalation meaning first filling up the uh, diaphragmic portion of the uh, our thorax through inhalation and then little more inhalation focusing on the upper lobes of the uh, lungs. Now, start to exhale, allow first chest to relax downward and then inward. After relaxing chest, allow diaphragm to move back into the chest, empty lungs by pulling abdominal wall down towards spine. 
this completes one round of yogic breathing. At least 10 rounds must be done uh, in the beginning and uh, this whole process can be extended to 10 minutes daily after mastering this technique.